I'm Steve Urbanek. Welcome to This is Barron. Did you know that the Penn State Barron campus is more than 850 acres in all? One reason for that sits out there, the Wintergreen Gorge. The Wintergreen Gorge is a 3,980 foot long and 250 foot wide chasm on the edge of campus. It's believed to have been formed more than 11,000 years ago at the end of the Ice Age when rushing water from a melting iceberg carved through shale and sandstone on its way to Lake Erie. Today, it's a popular spot for students, faculty and staff of the college, and for the community too. In all seasons, it's a beautiful place to walk, run, hike, or bike. Because so many people like using the gorge, there's a need to protect it from problems like soil erosion. Preservation efforts are already underway. That's what we'll be discussing today. I'm here with Ann Quinn, the Director of Greener Barron, and Randy Gearing, the Senior Director of Operations and Business at the college. Thank you both for joining me. Sure. Now I know the Wintergreen Gorge is near and dear to both of your hearts. So tell me, what do you think it is that makes it such a special part of Penn State Barron? Um, well, Steve, I, I can speak to that. I think that Barron right now is working on a living lab concept. There's not a better place to engage our students and faculty than out here at Winter Green Gorge. The amount of ideas, experiments, activities they can do here is sure. endless. Yeah, it's a, it's a real community asset, Steve. We get folks from the local Harbor Creek and also from the city of Erie, and they come out and walk the gorge. It's really beautiful but it gives them the, the uh, chance to see the college and see that what, where, what, where we are, where we're located, and how beautiful the college is. You're two of the people most involved in preserving the gorge. Can you tell us what's been done thus far? Um, sure, thanks for asking, Steve. We started with a master plan, um, and the, we received grants for that in 2013. And since then, we've been fortunate enough to receive more grant funds to work on the implementation of that master plan. And maybe Randy could tell you a little bit about that. Yeah, Steve, so the next step after we develop the master plan is to actually follow through with creating the, 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 the pathway. So to that end, we've hired a professional and we have gotten, we're in the design phase to actually design the path that will go from Cooper Road up to Devil's Backbone. We have had our initial kickoff meeting, so we're in the process now of doing some surveying and also getting some permitting because obviously when you work in a beautiful environment like this uh, there's a lot of different uh, departments that want to make sure that we're doing it the right way so in, it, eventually we'll have a very sustainable path well that leads me to my next question so one of the goals in moving forward is for the gorge to sustain and preserve itself um, yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I work a lot with sustainability sure. issues overall on campus. <laughs> so um, with this Gorge Trail, we're trying very hard to do that. And in fact, the Gorge was originally created on um, fall lines, just naturally where the rain fell, that's where a path began. And because of that, then there's a lot of side trails that are actually creating more of a problem, more erosion and a reduction of um, biodiversity. So the, the trail will really, in enhance, I believe, all of the biodiversities and we're doing our very utmost not to cut down trees um, to the best of our extent or to remove any um, plant matter at all. Yeah, I think another part of that too is we're engaging in the public. It gets a lot of use and what we ultimate goal is to teach people as they enjoy the gorge how to take care of it, how to maintain it. There'll be a lot of informational signs. There'll be signs about riparian zones. There'll be signs about how to treat it properly, pack in, pack out. Um, the idea is that we get the community involved enough so that they care more when they're here and they don't you know, throw their trash or uh, graffiti or anything like that. And they help, help us maintain the path so it, it's sustainable and beautiful for everybody to enjoy. That's great to hear. This, this really is gonna be very beneficial, not just for the campus, but also for the community. So final question. Since you both are the experts, I have to ask, what do you think is the most beautiful view in the gorge? Um, personally, for me, I like to go into Four Mile Creek, and I like to look upstream and downstream, and it is absolutely gorgeous. It is always different. You've got the moving water, um, the sunlight, the trees that are across the gorge. Every day it's different, and every day it's absolutely beautiful. That's a great question. You know, as I was thinking about that uh, when Ann was answering, gosh, I don't know that I have a favorite view. Certainly Devil's Backbone is incredible, uh, the views that you get. 
but you know, I hike with my grandchildren a lot and we go to a lot of different places and being in the water and walking along the water, it's just fabulous. I mean, it's, and, and on a day like today, you just can't beat it. And Randy, I wanna thank you both for joining me once again. And viewers, take a look at the Wintergreen Gorge. This is Barrend.